I'd like to re-invite Dr. Puxty up to uh, connect the dots. Uh. She's frightened about what I'm going to say. <laughs> One of the problems about um, agreeing to have the last official word is they insist you have this slide deck before everyone said what they're going to say. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of liberty and play a little bit with how I'm going to say things. Um, first of all, I just want to stress something, because a couple of comments I had over lunch, I think people may have missed the point. This is really important, essential information, but we're focusing in on stroke. So some of the messages, even the use of AlphaFim, the discussions about economic analysis, they definitely are validated in the issue of stroke. We still have to look at that in terms of orthopedic rehabilitation, in terms of the issues we talked about, the loss of function, the deconditioning that occurs in non-rehab diagnosis individuals, people who come in with pneumonia, heart failure, etc. So th there's still a lot of work to be done, but this is really important information that's been shared with us today. Um, I wanted to also reinforce, I, the, I think, the incredibly thoughtful design that, that went into today. Um, in that we, we often get uh, the evidence-based perspective. We often translate ourselves that it's based on our own tacit knowledge and experience, what we as clinicians, health professionals believe is true. But rarely do we get actually the client, the lived experience. And, and I think that's been really an incredibly illuminating part of today to have the, the information shared by Dan, by uh, Steve, and, and by his main caregiver. And, and to see them live in the role of independence and continuing to enjoy life uh, despite challenges. Um, and some of the things they shared with me, I'm gonna carry on. The comment, I, I, I've got you, I've got you. I use that all the time in the clinic when I'm trying to assess people's gates and I tell them to stand there, close their eyes, don't worry, I've got you. <laughs> or I take them for a walk down the corridor, I've got you. When actually I'm six foot away watching what they're doing. <laughs> um, really, really, the, the stories you both shared about this uh, separation gap from hospital to community, that's really made me think, and I'm sure other people are gonna have to think about that transition in the process. And I guess the comment about the recovery over years and Dan's example of the hitchhiker thumb. Um, the fact that the, the, it continues to improve and it raises the question, even when we're talking about intensification of rehab and, and ongoing community, we're still only talking about three months. So, you know, are, are we still underestimating the value uh, and the need? And the comment about the underground network, that was great. Because this whole issue about how do you access services? And then us who work in hospital-based, which is compensated services, all part of OHIP, there's this private service you can go to. You know, this, this reluctance to almost talk about and share the, the, the opportunities that are there. Um, I just wanted to share some good news stories. Um, there has been work done over the last year um, and more by groups in terms of trying to prove, improve some of the uh, uh, ability to access information about services and resources in southeastern Ontario. So a group of us launched a, uh, a service, um, it's called Fast Links, and you can find it on www.sagelink, S-A-G-E, L-I-N-K, period C-A. It's on the home page, and it's breaking down all the services in southeastern Ontario by function. So there's 10 key geographic maps that you can readily access that will help you find an occupational therapist in that community, a speech therapist, and it uses the Google map technology so you can drill down and use it. So I hope that's helpful. And CCAC will be launching their new uh, web-based navigation tool in the next month, which will augment and I think add to that functionality. So there are resources being brought out in Southeast Ontario in the next month or two which I think will help with some of that navigation issues. www. S-A-G-E-L-I-N-K, SAGE, and LINK, 
linking health professionals to knowledge and expertise, uh, .ca. That was a little bit of advertising. I made sure Callie said it was okay. She was also one of the co-authors in the process, so I guess that makes it validated. Um, so what have we heard about the uh, stroke rehabilitation system in terms of its roadblocks? Uh, we've heard about uh, a lot of evidence to support the need for acute stroke units. The fact that we in our community only have one official stroke unit, KGH, and it has achieved 80% uh, of, of, of individual acute stroke going through that, which is an important benchmark achievement. Um, but we've still got a lot of work to do in this process. We've got some concentrations of expertise in Quinty, we know, that potentially could take on some of that functionality. And when we looked at the geography, we've got a, a, an issue in LLG and the fact that we prob possibly need to think about concentrating because we haven't reached that critical 150 in any of the hospitals there. Um, we've been talking about regional standards for access, which I just was hinting, and easy access to rehabilitation. Uh, and certainly at St. Mary's of Lake, there's been a lot of work done in recent years to make sure there is seven-day access, but there's more work still to be done on that. Uh, the concept of intensification of rehab has been discussed repeatedly. Um, regional access to slow stream rehab. I need to have I need to take a minute here just to take a side side step and just to clarify. In our restorative care uh, plan, we talk about slow stream rehab. We're not talking about passive convalescent recovery that I think you see in many CCC settings historically. It's a, it has been valuable, and we have seen instances, for example, in the Connell Four experience at KGH, where people who actually work to give them some access to a little bit of therapy and a supportive environment did improve and go home. We're talking about a, a service where there's a team, a multidisciplinary team, there's rehabilitation goals, there's an admission criteria, individuals can at least participate in 30 minutes of active rehab a day, and the service is being provided at least Monday to Friday. So it, it is an active service and program we're talking about when we talked about the idea of transferring at least 30% of current funded complex continuing care beds to a slow stream rehab function. Um, and it does exist. It does exist in southeastern Ontario. It exists at Leeds, Lennox and Grenville uh, in, uh, in terms of Brockville General Hospital. It also exists in Napanee in terms of the Lennox and Addington Hospital. And there's been work done also in Quinty at the Belleville General Hospital. So they are starting to emerge, and there has been some emerging expertise in that process. Um, we've got a lot of gaps in the community, as we've identified. Um, and that's going to be a big challenge for us. Uh, we've got gaps in ambulatory. We've got gaps in terms of community services. CCAC have been playing a, a tremendous role in our community in terms of trying to respond to, to the needs, again, around the stroke patients. But we still have gaps, and we need to develop and, and, and identify new resources. Um, you know, I've been involved in the Clinical Services Roadmap for Restorative Care for over two years now. And I completely support all of the recommendations coming out of the uh, stroke rehab uh, priority recommendations. They, they make sense, they're evidence-based, and I think they validate the lived experience. Um, so I hope we can have more dialogue about how we can move forward some of these. And again, uh, I guess we're going to get to looking at the picture again. But again, just mention we don't want to go along that bottom route. That's the recipe for disaster. And of course, if it was Kingston, there'd be a lot of pots and holes and everything. <laughs> so we'd invest all in road care for the upper half. Thank you.